at just 21, I sold that first company there, and that was experience of a lifetime. That, you know, that exit changed my life, you know, and it's like, it was cool. It was cool. It was really cool to have started from scratch, from nothing, like idea, idea. Like I'm getting chills now. Like I wish the camera could zoom in like past the sweater and just see like it was something that was first conceived. How fascinating is that? That's what entrepreneurship is. That's why I love it. And when you conceive this idea, every single one of you guys here in the room have gone through unique experiences. You have different parents. You were raised in a different, even if you were all raised in the, in the same town, you were raised on different streets, you had different friends. Like your, your experiences groom the way that you look at things. It shapes the lens through which you see things. And so even if you guys all had the same idea, which you likely wouldn't, but let's say you did, your guys' approach to solving that idea would be completely different from the person next to you. It's about how you do it in your own way. And the entrepreneurs that really come in tune and close tune with themselves and their own intuition, like a Steve Jobs, like a Buffett, like a Cuban, like a Musk, Bezos, who's one of my favorite entrepreneurs in the world. I think he's the best entrepreneur in the world right now, Jeff Bezos. Um, the, when you, the further you lean into yourself, the, the more interesting, uh, you know, the, the more interesting a concept you can create and, and, and more importantly, execute on it. Because ideas are easy. But execution is everything. Execution is everything, right? So, what what that original what that original resident taught me, the first guy who got me into business, he showed me how to bring an idea to life. It's actually not. I mean, it's hard. It's simple, but it's not easy, right? It's like he showed me. Oh, you have an idea? Okay, like guys, we're digital natives. There is no generation right now that is as well positioned as this one to succeed in the future. We grew up with, with, with the things that corporations are trying to crack and they can't, they can't understand. Snapchat, how does that work? Instagram, like they're watching in dismay as their returns are dwindling because people aren't watching TV anymore. People aren't consuming print like they were. And all this attention is going to digital platforms and they don't understand. How fascinating is that? Before, in the era of TV, in the era of radio, in the era of print, you needed to go through the gatekeeper and you needed to have a lot of money to get started and, and push ads. And so they felt comfortable because there was a, there was, you know, they had leverage. But now it's an, it's an equal playing field. If you have a phone and you have a lot of hustle, you can put out videos, you can grow brands. I'm seeing with my own eyes as I travel the country how young people like us are able to extract some of this value. As these dollars shift from traditional to digital, we're gonna be in the, in the best position to extract those dollars. It is fascinating to me that that's true. We're consuming right now over 14 hours of peer-generated content per day. That means you're not really watching, like you're watching what the New York Times is putting out, but you're, you're watching more what your, what your friends are putting out your friends, with your homies, like it's a totally different environment that we naturally are well equipped to thrive in. And so, so anyways, so since then, since that exit, I've been working with early stage companies to one capacity or another and I've been having a great time doing it. I have a non-for-profit incubator in Harlem where we offer 50,000 in resources, we offer free mentorship and free office space, and we take zero equity in your company. The one thing that we ask is that you make a commitment to headquarter in Harlem after the program. Very fascinating thing. I just fell in love with the village. Uh, I'm also a venture capital investor, so I've invested in six companies now through my firm called Harlem Capital Partners. Uh, and we're on a mission. We invest in founders from all backgrounds, but 50% of our money goes specifically to women, my, minority entrepreneurs, LGBTQ veterans, uh, because one thing is clear, as we travel the country, um, the v venture money is you know, only 1% Right, only 1% of venture money is going to non-white males, right? So that means like there are women, minority, like there are so many people with great ideas and great execution who want to bring their ideas to market, but because of the way things have traditionally been done, they, they don't have access to the capital to execute on the idea. And so I'm doing it 
because it's important, but not just because it's Mother Teresa important, but like it's good business. I think like, sorry fellas, but like women founders are like kind of better. Like, like women are like more organized, like they articulate more clearly their information, you know. So anyway, so this is what I've been doing. I've been incubating companies, investing in companies. I host a podcast for eBay. I travel to about two or three cities a week, interviewing entrepreneurs, speaking at different places. Um, and you know, if you guys have any questions at all, uh, around the early stages of a company, how to develop ideas, communities, you, you name it, um, I'm happy to dive in. But that's what I have for you today. I'm hoping we can get into, I wanna make it as interactive as possible. Thank you guys.